you are all aware that some members of the United Kingdom House of Lords have called on the UK government to apply sanctions on Nigeria based on an erroneous report of rising number of killing of Christians by terrorists and state actors in Nigeria. The call which was contained in a letter to Dominic Rao, MKUK Foreign Secretary, House of Commons, London, was signed by David Patrick, Paul Elton, the Lord Elton of Liverpool, a Liberal Democratic member of the UK Parliament, Caroline Annex Cox, a crossbench member of the UK House of Lords, and others, but most remarkably, the former Nigerian President Chief Olusegun Obasanjo. We had thought that since one of our own is involved in writing the letter, that at least that at least the UK Parliament parliamentarians would be properly guided in their assessment of the security situation in Nigeria. Unfortunately, this has not been the case, as we have been trace, we have seen traces of partisanship, deliberate attempts to twist facts in order to arrive at predetermined conclusion. The issues. The, pet the petitioners, rather than being objective in their anal analysis, reduced the entire Boko Haram terrorism and other criminal activities by armed groups to a religious conflict. They also allege cases of human rights abuses against a particular faith by armed groups and actors. While it is true that more needs to be done about the security situation in Nigeria, it is definitely misleading to reduce the challenges to the four lines of religion and to accuse the Nigerian military to either conclusion or inaction or perpetrating human rights abuses. The most uncharitable is to, to use this such baseless allegations as a basis to call for sanctions against Nigeria. This is most unfair because if, if there is any administration that has given uh, the issue of security a deserve attention, it is the current administration of President Muhammad Buhari. Since May, 20, 20, since May 2015, when the Buhari administration was inaugurated, it has taken bold steps to curb terrorism insurgency and other crimes in the country, hence cannot at all be accused of sleeping on the matter. Within the last one year, the Nigerian military has neutralized over 2,000 terrorists across the northern parts of the country, arrested over hundreds of their members and informants, and destroyed their weapons and operation facilities. This is, an, this is in addition to major feast recorded in the previous years, which have restored normalcy to most parts of the region. Nigerian troops, for instance, have entered the base of the terrorists of, at Sambisa Forest and captured the, their center, which is called Camp Zero. The troops have also recaptured ter territories seized by terrorists, including 20 local governments spread across the three states of Adamawa, Borono, and Yobe, and brought them back to the country. They have retaken captured military bases in Burma, Mongono, and Goza, as well as recapturing territories captured by the terrorists while the efforts of the military 
has made it impossible for the insurgency to launch further attacks on communities living there. Added to that, Nigerian annual military expenditure has grown from $1.8 billion in 2016 to $2.1 billion in 2021 at a compound annual growth, growth rate of 3.73%, according to a report by Strategic Defense Intelligence. To boost its preparedness and resolve to flush out the terrorists, the Nigerian army last year purchased more equipment, including the Chinese rotary wing, Avid A AV500, 500, 500 drone, to carry out ISR missions at medium altitude, carrying out strikes, and stay airborne for nine hours while fighting terrorists. The Nigerian Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Tukuru Yusuf Baratei, at a time even relocated to the centers of the conflict and stayed in the trenches with troops until substantial damages were inflicted on the ranks of the terrorists. The battle was so fierce against the terrorists that the leader of the Boko Haram terrorist Abubakar Shekau was heard weeping in an audio tape about how his men have been subdued by the Nigerian forces and had even considered surrendering. For a government that has taken these steps and has made it a priority to defeat terrorism, it is most unfair for anyone to contemplate taking sanction against it. We, we recall that it was similar gesture based probably on such misleading reports that led the U.S. government and other nations to stop selling weapons to Nigeria during the past administration, which gave the insurgents an upper hand in the fight, in the fight and hence their recruitment drive. But the impression given by the letter is that the Nigerian government is not doing anything about, uh, about exterminating the problem. We do, not want to, we, do, we do not want the UK to be misled by the current report into believing that the Nigerian government is either laxed about the situation or is supporting the insurgents. This is far from being the truth. The religious card. The most misleading aspect of the letter is the claim that the attacks are purely religious and targeted only at Christians. The letter reads in part, and I quote, we write following the publication of a new report by a Nigerian human rights group Intersociety, intersociety as an intersociety, an estimated 34,400 Christians have been killed in Nigeria since 2007, including 17,000 by Boko Haram, by Boko Haram, and 15,500 by Fulani militia. We ask. What is the total number of these people that have died as a result of terrorism in Nigeria since 2009? That only Christians, only Christians would be up to 34,400. We therefore state without fear of contradiction that the report is not only misleading, but is an attempt to incite the people against religious lines. While some terrorists have tried to use primordial fault lines to instigate a large-scale crisis in the country, it is wrong to conclude that the victims of the crisis have been only Christians. At 
attacks in the northern states and the middle belt have been visited on all persons in those areas, irrespective of religious beliefs and ethnicity. In fact, the demographics of the affected areas indicate that non-Christians have been at the receiving end of such atrocities like killings, rape, abduction, arson, etc. by the terrorists. The areas was affected by the attacks in the northeast include the, north, the northern and central parts of Borno State, which are populated mainly by Muslims. Same, same with the other parts of the north, northeast, like Yobe and Adama states. In the northwest, all the areas affected, like Sokoto, Zamfara, Katsina, with the probable exception of Kaduna, Kaduna State, are also hundreds of 100% 100 Muslims. Even in the Middle Belt states, the crisis cannot be, be termed religious as well because people of different faiths in the states like Niger, Nasarawa, Plato, and Benue have suffered similar fates. It is also not true that Nigeria's security forces have committed crimes against humanities and war crimes. The Nigerian army has conducted itself in a most professional manner by always observing the rules of engagement. The chief of army staff, to check the few reported cases, even set up a desk for civilians to report cases of abuse. And since then, there have been no reports of human rights violation. Our call. We therefore consider the call for sanction against Nigeria based on these inexact and misleading reports as callous and unacceptable. The aim of such calls is to further polarize the people of the country and set, set them up against each other on religious lines, which is exactly what the insurgents have been praying for. The UK government should not, on the basis of the ignorance expressed in this report, play into the hands of the terrorists. We have seen how a young UK parliamentarian goofed when he said a former Nigerian head of state stole the Central Bank of Nigeria. This is one of such fox packs that should not be allowed to stand. We demand that the same manner, the same manner the world removed the UK parliamentarian for getting his facts twisted should be applied here. Furthermore, we demand that the manner the world treated the invasion of U.S. capital as this, this the speakable should be the same it should be the same way it treats this letter as it tends to violate the rights of the people of Nigeria to be protected by its government and its armed forces. We call on all to join hands for Nigeria and the rest of the world to stamp out terrorism. Thank you very much. Well, the military operations in the north uh, has been, it has been improving uh, because, you know, the military operations in the north is a haphazard kind of thing. It, 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 comes, it, it, it comes at a point where the insurgents or the, 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 the bandits, where the bandits discover that the attention of the military is hitting them very seriously. They get some of their wings to instigate crisis elsewhere so as to attract the attention of the military and 
relieve themselves of the heat that they are receiving. So I can say in summary that the military operations in the north has been moving on positively. It is on. Even though, you know, there are more with crisis of unemployment, crisis of po poverty, and so many other things with other foreigners infiltrating our borders. We have had so many people taken to crime. And the group that constitute themselves as insurgents have had the upper hand in recruiting such people for their own nefarious activities. Thank you very much. Thank you.